Greetings. Okay, this is a video series on how to create an EFI based uh, bootloader for your operating system. And I've put the tuts here on my GitHub. The GitHub will be in the description. And basically, this is what you're going to want to download. Um, you can read all of this. This is what I've already done so far here with a couple of pictures. And uh, let's let's just start from the beginning here. So you're going to want to start with that. And what we're going to do is we have to create and set up um, things like OS amount. And I've put the links here. You just right click, go here. You're going to want to grab this program. By the way, this is whole video series is based on uh, using Windows 10 to build your operating system, or in this case, to build the EFI to load your operating system. Okay, so kind of need that. You also will need to get a copy of the EFI specs. Now, I did include it in my GitHub here, so you may not uh, need to actually uh, download it separate. Um, but I do have to at least show this to you as to where it came from, which is right here. Okay, so we've got that. I've already downloaded this. You go ahead and install that with its defaults. You're also going to want to get a copy of GCC. And this is the version I use, and it's a 9.2.0. There are newer versions of GCC out there, but it's not necessary. Uh, that version, this version works just fine. It's also native to Windows, 64-bit, uh, so it works just fine. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. So let's see here. I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that and share how to set this up. Now, before we get further, uh, let me show how to use this. Mount do this and uh, you're going to show it and point it to your desktop which is going to point to that folder here you're going to go to drive and that's where it's going to be at say open say next mount the entire thing next read only direct and hdd physical disk emulation make sure all these settings are correct click mount and wait for it to show up now um this is how the drive.hdd file already is set up on my GitHub. So you'll be able to actually see this actually working, and you're going to need to uh, know all about all that. So that is how that physically works for mounting it. Dismount, say exit. We're not going to come back to that. Um, so let's say in VirtualBox... And uh, let's delete this, remove, there we go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a folder. So new folder, call it VB for VirtualBox, all right? That's kind of important. So we're just going to minimize that. We're going to say new. You're going to want to choose other, and you're going to want to choose uh, other unknown 64-bit. Then you're going to want to point from the other desktop in here, and you're going to want to point to that folder. Select folder, and now we could just say EFI tuts. Say next. Uh, we're going to raise that to use uh, 256 meg of RAM. So next, we do not want to add a hard drive here. So say create, continue, and then we go to system. And we have to enable, whoops, we have to enable the EFI right here, okay? That's important. We don't need a floppy or optical. We only need a hard drive because that's what we're loading, okay? Um, let's see what else. Choo -choo -choo -choo. Storage, okay. So we click here because it's already set for IDE. Uh, we click here, and this is for like a CD, uh, DVD loader, uh, but we, we're not going to be utilizing that because we don't need to. We are, we're going to be utilizing the HDD file that has been created. So we're going to go here to drive.hdd, say choose, and you'll notice that was a 40 meg drive. All right, and there's the info right there. Say okay, 
And now we can actually just click Start to actually run and execute this. Give it a second. Might take a moment. And voila, here we go. Okay. Now normally there's a pop-up. You just click the, the balloon looking thing to shut off the pop-up. But uh, go here and go to Scaled Mode. And that way you can scale your actual screen and uh, see it better. Okay, so if I hit the space bar, and voila, we get this. And this is actually based off of an actual timer that is built into the EFI. So that's why I added this as a uh, kind of show you that it does actually work. Hitting any key does nothing. Anyways, the point is you're gonna see, we're going to go through the tutorial series. We're going to actually build this step by step and see why this is doing what it's doing. So if I hit the Q key, it actually reboots and brings us right back here, and it's a vicious cycle. There we go. Click this, and we go to choose Power Off the Machine, say OK. And we are all set to go there. Now, in here, you can also run, if you install the 2020 version, the latest of the 2020 version of the QEMU for Windows 10, then this will actually work. If you try to run the newer uh, 2021 version, there's no promises that'll work. In fact, it may actually crash. Um, and we, I've spoken to several people about it, but nobody seems to know why. So anyhow, you just double click the bat file. The first time that you run it, you're going to get this. Don't worry, it's safe. Just uh, do this and um, it actually executes. By the way, there's the command line switches for it right there. And you can actually copy that down into your own bat file. And it just basically does the same thing. And you'll notice it's the same timer speed and everything. So yeah, hit the Q and it actually reboots and it pauses for a second and it actually reboots and voila, QEMU, all set and ready to go. So let's take a look at the bat file. So right click, right click, edit. You can go, uh, now I've already told it to uh, accept it, but you may have to click accept like we did the other bat file. Anyhow, these are the settings you're going to want to know about. So yeah, there's that. Um, in fact, do I even have this? Oh, I do. So I've already put a make file. I've already got the compile and I've already got all this set up and ready to go. But the QEMU was slightly different. Um, and that did all this so that we can actually get this to work. Now you can rename this to whatever you want to rename it to, but we have to, for QMU, it has to have an actual BIOS to interact with. I've already supplied that right here. Okay, so yeah, um, everything's good to go. Here's our actual source. This is where the tutorial one will begin. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, that helps. Oh, one other thing too, in the hold, uh, this right here can open up into your browser or whatever your PDF interface. This is what we'll be using a lot. So uh, if you have any questions or anything, just contact me here. And uh, yeah, I guess I will see you on the next tutorial. Ciao.